Hey, it's Stephanie, Dungeon Diaries, and I am so excited to be making this video about what I predict to be a buzzword of 2016, the gut microbiome. So as we have been told, or maybe you haven't been told, inside of your gut is trillions of bacteria. And these are good bacterias. And there was a news article on December 30th that I read and I loved it because it's right in line with what I have been learning over the last six months. It's all about um, the gut. And I used to roll my eyes, blah, 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 blah. oh, gluten-free, oh, I have gut problems, I have leaky gut, I have this kind of gut. I just thought it was all a bunch of garbage, you know, just like another diet trend, like low carb was a trend and um, low fat was a trend and then we all found out that that was a bunch of crap. So um, it wasn't until recently and all of the books and podcasts that I have been diving into that I changed my, I just changed my mindset and my opinion of this topic. So tiny, tiny fast forward story about me. I was overweight or basically a snapshot of me and my health journey. I was overweight all through elementary school, middle school, high school. I get to college. Things finally click. I hated being the fat kid. Like you don't even know. <laughs> if you were the fat kid, you know. I hated it, but I was always active. I always did dance. I did softball. I did t-ball. I was taking like two or three dance classes a week and I ate like my siblings and I was the fattest one in my family by far. So who knows? But I got to college and I finally lost 70 pounds and it took about five years for me to lose that weight. And I learned a lot about nutrition and I exercised and I would mountain bike all the time and hike and I, um, you know, just found a lot of things that I love to do activity wise and I really focused in on my diet and I, um, I was pretty lower carb, lower sugar for the most part. Um, during that time when I was losing weight and I kept it off and then um, I started to feel sick but I didn't realize at the time that it was um, just things in my body starting to go awry and over the next five or so years I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, I had adrenal fatigue, I had lots of inflammation, I had hormone imbalances all over, I was so sick, I had some birth control side effects and I gained a lot of weight in a very short period of time and I was a wreck. I had also been on some medication that wasn't the right medication for me and I know that that contributed as well because it is a drug that is known for having weight gain side effects. So I started to pack on all of the weight and no matter what I did, I could not seem to lose it. I even resorted to ordering my food and for 90 days I ate 800 calories and I barely lost 12, 15 pounds in 90 days. And my friend was doing the very same program. She lost 45 pounds in 90 days. <laughs> so you can just imagine the amount of discouragement that I felt every doctor would eventually just say, I don't know what else to tell you. This looks good. This looks good. Your diet looks good. Your activity looks good. I don't know. And I drove myself insane and I was depressed. Like legitimate, not just sad for a day. I mean, I was suffering from some pretty scary depression over my weight and my health. I felt like I had achieved my health and then it got just taken away from me. And of course there was some food involved and my food addiction did play a part, the binging and then the restriction and, you know, not eating for three months, um, well, barely eating for three months and then binging for two months. And, you know, I, I just could not, you name it, I try it, juicing, smoothies, low carb, um, crazy diets, protein shakes. I mean, I used to take like 30 pills a day of supplements, just trying to get everything to work better. And it was not fun or cheap. So I became very skeptical of any diet, any new like, oh, 
um, everybody should stop eating wheat. Everybody should stop eating this, eat more of that. I just thought it was all just fads and none of it was scientifically based and it didn't apply to me. So what I love about this article is that it has finally been proven what I have felt for years and none of the doctors could say because there wasn't really research supporting it, but they have found in this first-of-a-kind study showing us something our experience told us all along, one size does not fit all, and healthy foods differ by the individual. And this is a study that basically proved that your body is going to process food completely in its own unique way. And that all of these dietary recommendations are a nice idea, but if you're trying to lose weight, you may be somebody who really has a hard time losing weight, and you may not be somebody who has a hard time losing weight, and a lot of that comes down to the bacteria in your gut. And I started listening to podcasts on this subject, I don't know, I mean, in the last six months, I've really changed some things in my diet, major, major changes. And so that's when I started learning more and really kind of feeling enlightened by this subject. Um, but there were some studies all about um, blood sugar and people would be given the same diet and they were monitored for a certain number of time. And it showed that all of the participants had a completely unique blood sugar response, insulin response, like from each other they were all different and there were over 800 participants in the study and they have found that we each have trillions of bacteria bacteria in our digestive tract in fact they say that we have 100 times more bacteria in our gut microbiome than we have genes in our genome and growing evidence suggests bacteria are linked to obesity glucose and diabetes and the study demonstrates that specific microbes indeed correlate with how much blood sugar rises post-meal. Now, um, blood sugar has a very, like, close relationship to um, obesity. And I'm not going to get into that, but it's what I will say is that the blood sugar response, the insulin response within the body, is tied to the bacteria in your gut. Isn't that interesting? That's why I eat the way that I do, because it's supposed to help with all of that. Um, so there's a doctor who wrote a book called The Doctor on Demand Diet, and her name is Dr. Melina Jampolis, and she's a physician nutrition specialist. And she said, you just can't expect to lose weight by eating the same exact thing as your neighbor, husband, best friend, or coworker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Melina. <sighs> Could you please go and talk to some of my doctors that told me that I was lying to them about what I was eating, and they just told me I just needed to stop eating and exercise for two hours a day. I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. So it says emerging science surrounding the gut microbiome suggests it is a modifiable risk factor that can be genetically addressed through dietary intervention in as little as a few days. Hmm. She says to start moving toward plant-based diets rich in fiber, less in processed food, refined sugar, refined grains, and saturated fat. And she says that other things that play a really big role is physical activity, stress management, and adequate sleep. Those are all things that also improve blood sugar. She said without the three pillars of wellness, diet, exercise, and sleep, you're never going to get healthy and stay healthy. And um, so anyway, I've also been listening to the Bulletproof Diet book. Um, for the fourth time while I've been doing my walks and I loved the chapter on coconut oil because when I switched over from points plus to smart points something that I have every single day went from three points to seven smart points and that is that is huge <laughs> think about like you could have an entire meal for seven smart points and here I am like clinging to my one tablespoon like this much of coconut oil and I also I alternate between MCT oil which is a medium chain triglyceride 
oil, which is basically like super, super, super concentrated coconut oil, keeping it simple again. And so I'll alternate for my coconut oil simply just because I like the taste of it and then my MCT oil. And um, the MCT oil is really awesome because almost immediately when you eat it, it's metabolized by your liver and goes straight to your brain to feed your brain and so that your brain is running off of this steady supply of energy. And oh boy, that is the truth. If you haven't seen my completely ridiculous video about how my brain is totally lit up and I have Christmas lights on my head, it was a total joke because that's my sense of humor. But anyway, it was like the, an avatar-like experience where after a few weeks of eating high fat, low carb, it's like I literally felt like my brain was back to how I was at my best, at my prime, when I was the most alert, the most awake, the most energized, the best brain power, because that's the one of the biggest things that I struggled with after having my thyroid go out of whack, all my hormones go out of whack, being super obese, is I just felt like I couldn't remember, I couldn't think, I couldn't recall words that I wanted to say. I just felt like in a giant fog and it was awful. And I feel like I'm totally out of that. But anyway, back to the coconut oil and the MCT oil. So I was reading and walking, or re listening and walking, and I was talking about how coconut oil is like one of the best um, ways to support the right kind of bacteria in your gut. It feeds the right kind of bacteria. And this is all newer information to me and that's why I listen to it every single day. This is my fourth read through the Bulletproof Diet and I listen to podcasts and so this is where I'm at. And I just, I want to take a minute and say this isn't where you have to be at and you may be in a totally different place and I can assure you that I am I understand that we're all in a different place. What works for me may not work for you. I also want to say that I have not always eaten this way. In fact, over the summer, I was having a cheeseburger at McDonald's and a small fry every single Friday. It was 14 points. If I was super hungry, I would get a McDouble. It was 10 points plus, and my fries were six points plus for a small, and that's what I had. It was my Friday tradition. I used to order pizza every Friday, and then all I did was binge on it, and I would have like 27 points or whatever of pizza and it really prevented me from losing weight for a few months and so I switched over to McDonald's because I didn't ever feel like I wanted to binge on the McDonald's, go through the drive through I'd get my burger, my fry, and that was it. I was satisfied for the rest of the day and it was my little treat that I looked forward to. Right now I wouldn't have a cheeseburger from McDonald's, not because I think that McDonald's is a horrible place. I actually think that they have some great options on their menu, but I'm just not eating wheat. And I have had one cheeseburger from McDonald's since going high fat, low carb, wheat free. And I just had it without the bun and it was delicious. It was great. So I'm not a food snob. And I think that that's one thing that is easy to run into when you start kind of like climbing the ladder within the nutrition community. There is a lot of judgment there's a lot of people who, you know, are just very judgmental and very critical and very passionate. And I know that it comes from a place of passion and this is what they believe, but that just does not fit me. I mean, we are just a regular family trying to make it and live the American dream. And we like to go out and I like to save money on groceries and I don't shop at certain grocery stores. I buy the highest quality that I can afford for my family. And I just buy a little bit less food because I'm, I'm satisfied on less food right now. But I just wanna say, you know, there were even times where when I had joined Weight Watchers, I needed some retraining on what a portion size was. And so I was eating um, the microwave dinners, the smart ones, the lean cuisines. I stocked my freezer full of those. And for two weeks, that's all I ate because I needed to retrain my body into knowing what a portion size was. And that's where I was at. This is not something that you just overnight wake up and say, I'm going to go from eating fast food every single meal to eating this way and expect it to be like a really smooth transition. I'm not saying that it can't be done. I mean, I feel great eating this way and at some point I had to just start eating this way. But I just, 
um, want to say that this is not coming from a place of judgment when I talk about these videos and how I eat, just so that that's clear. But um, anyway, back to the coconut oil. Um, that's what made me decide to keep eating my full serving of coconut oil. Coconut oil is all saturated fat and it's a plant-based saturated fat, but it has some properties that put it into a little bit different category all of its own. And um, I feel absolutely fine eating it every single day. I eat a whole tablespoon every day. I went back and forth between should I count it as seven points, should I count it as however many points Crisco is because Crisco was also four smart points and I was getting so mad because I was feeling like I couldn't eat the way that I wanted to to feel good once we switched over to smart points. But I I have come to terms and I'm at peace with my program and I give myself a little bit more freedom on the weekends to eat more points, not necessarily I just go out and eat bad foods, but I'm going to have more avocado and I might have two bulletproof hot cocos and I might have a bigger salad and I might have a creamier soup or something on the weekends. And so I use my points and then Sunday until the weekend, I am trying really hard to just keep it like right on target, 33, 34 smart points. And I'm counting them for the full values because I have to, I have to do the program the way that it was intended to expect it to work. That's just how it is. So I count my coconut oil as seven smart points and it's fine. I'm fine. And I still eat my grass fed butter because I think it's gold and so good for you. And anyway, I just wanted to bring this article up because I am loving learning about the gut microbiome. And really quickly, another thing that I was listening to on a podcast, simply put again, is basically thin people and fat people have different kinds of bacteria that are in their gut and that there is actually like skinny people bacteria and so increasing that kind of bacteria um, can help you with the weight loss and that would take way too long um, but just check out if you're looking for where I'm getting all this information all of it was on Bulletproof Radio which is a podcast that you can subscribe to by Dave Asprey the author of The Bulletproof Diet and so when you're overweight you are lacking in the kind of bacteria that promotes being really thin basically. I know, I'm simplifying. Don't judge me. Don't leave me a mean comment, please. Okay? <sighs> Just don't. Anyway, so thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye! <laughs>